activity. But each month's change is due to estrogen. Okay. We did this already. Did this already. Okay, questions? Four. Did we do? Are we on three? Yeah, we're on three, right? Then we're ready for four. Okay. So identify the chromosomal pattern of the oocyte in this antral follicle. Not a mature antral follicle, all right? Size-wise and the fact that we still have a few other antral spaces here that haven't coalesced. So what's the chromosomal pattern of the oocyte in that antral follicle? I'm gonna make you eat your spinach and drill this into whether you like it or not. What would the follicular cells be? What would the chromosomal pattern, that's not what the question is, but what would the chromosomal pattern of follicular cells be? Or the theca interna cells? Two it. Okay, they're just regular somatic cells, body cells, so they're gonna be just two it. To identify the chromosomal pattern of the oocyte, you first have to decide if it's a prime a ovogonium, a primary oocyte, a secondary oocyte, or an oocyte. Not large enough to be a mature, okay? Uh, because we still see some of the smaller antral spaces. So it'd be about four or five times bigger than that okay. to be an, a mature antral. That should help you. some study help uh, with tutoring from uh, Curtis. He'll be in front of the library and then you guys can go get a study room tomorrow at 3. And his email is on Canvas. One of the announcements. Okay, anybody want more time on number 4? 
Okay. Even and younger than that. And that would still be a mature. This could be like a month prior to ovulation. So we see the antral follicle about two to three months before it actually ovulates in that two to 14, 12 to 14 months. Okay, you guys ready to move on? Sort of? All right, so here's the appearance of those luteal cells after ovulation, making primarily progesterone, but some estrogen. Did I show this to you last week? Yeah. Okay. So we have the follicle rupturing. This is not the egg, but it's the egg in there is surrounded by the follicular cell, I mean, by the corona radiata and cumulus uterus forming the follicular cells. So question number five, the egg cell, which is ovulated on day 14, demonstrates which of the following chromosomal patterns. That's a mature antifolic. That has to be seen, right? Becoming a corpus hemorrhagic. Yeah. Because then at that point, it's going to be fertilized by an end sperm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We got that one. <laughs> well, then that should lead you to the answer to the previous one. I don't know. Like, right? It's like the one, the one piece of note that I need that I didn't write down or didn't copy down. Sequentially, you should probably be able to follow your mail. This is true. In the mail, the cool. in the mail, the primary two parentheses to end. That's what I want. That's what I. That's what I. Yeah, that's why I put A for that one. So. Yeah. Yep. We gotta, we gotta start trusting ourselves. I think we know this a little bit. Well, she's, well, she's shooting them up like bullets, man. So the request <laughs> no, was made to go back to question four. Because yeah. this is important. Okay. 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 Yeah, primary. Yeah, we have a break. So you guys going to be the first group that everybody gets 100% on that question? That's the table? You should. We've gone over it enough times. So on the exam, remember I said there will be a list of cells? And I will give you the chromosomal patterns, and I'll say, I write in the chromosomal pattern of these cells. So they could be theca interna, they could be Sertoli cells, they could be first polar bodies, they could be primary spermatocytes. 
okay? All right, does anybody want more time on number five? Okay. So here are the endometrial changes that occurred. We saw that on the slide, but here is black and white histology. So prior to ovulation, the stratus functionalis is given two terms, okay? It's called pre-ovulatory, which is really easy, or it's called proliferative, all right? So from, go back to this image here. This is menses, okay? So this is menses, as you see here. And then the thickening uterus, under influence of estrogen, thickening stratum functionalis, up to ovulation is the proliferative phase or pre-ovulatory. Pre-ovulatory is equal, easy to understand, but it's also known as proliferative. After ovulation, the uterine glands are secreting stored polysaccharides, glycogen, in the expectation that around day seven to nine after ovulation, the egg will be fertilized and ready to implant. So that's the secretory mechanism. That's the meaning of secretory here, for the secretions of the glycogen from the uterine glands. So prior to ovulation, between menses and ovulation, the uterine stratum functionalis is called the pre-ovulatory or proliferative phase. Post-ovulatory is also known as secretory phase. So if we look at that in this image, you can see prior to ovulation, there's uterine glands, but very few. It looks a little bit like the mammary gland that's not lactating, except these are the columnar cells, and we can see the difference between stratum functionalis and stratum vasalis down here. Then after ovulation, here's one day, we see the uterine glands are starting to grow, and here, this is during gestation, you can see they're just really overgrown, but even in um, about four to five days after ovulation, they have this kind of, they look almost like the squirrel arteries, because they're kind of hypercoiled here, all right? but those are too large to actually be the spiral arteries. So those are the uterine glands. So you should be able to tell from a slide whether you're looking at pre-ovulatory pre proliferative or post-ovulatory um, secretory, okay? So again, pre-ovulatory notice, the glands actually should grow out of the stratum basalis, so that's a bad slide. Same here, they should have their base from the stratum basalis because when menses occurs, that's where we get the new epithelial covering of the stratum endometrium. Kind of like someone gets a second degree burn, the epithelium that covers the skin comes from the sweat glands and from the uh, mitotic cells of the hair follicles. Okay. So just, that's showing the basal temperature, just a half a percent there. And then just another slide showing the changes, a little more colorful, okay, where we overlap uterine cycle with follicular cycle with hormonal cycle. Okay, last question, because the next discussion of fertilization doesn't have any quiz questions. We'll put those on Wednesday. So which of these, if I can do it. So maybe I can make it a little bit larger for those of you in the back. So we're looking at mammary gland now. We're not looking at the uterine lining. So which of the following hormones are, is responsible for the change from ductal to secretory cell conversion? And these all have to do with mammary gland tissue, okay? Just different functions. We're going to take a 10-minute break and come back and do the clay activity. Kind of do a little thing activity before we actually, um, then when we're done with that, another short break and we'll come back and have our discussion on fertilization. Okay? So we're going to go back to five. Thanks. The request for us to go back to question five. Okay, so if you're done with question six, you can go ahead and take a break, or you're welcome to keep working on it, and we'll come back 
at about um, what do you feel? Okay. We'll come back and work on the play activity at 20 tail. Question? Stay here? No, six. Oh, six. Okay, so we're moving on back to six. Yeah? I just need to read it again. Yeah. There's six. <laughs> I think so. So it's not B? I think it's S. You can go ahead and put your quizzes up on the front desk. All right, we're still going to talk about fertilization, but I don't have any quiz questions on that one for tonight anyway. Babies have to ruin everything great. When you're thinking about that, I'm going to go tear off the paper for you to do your clay activity on to keep it from sticking to the table. Yeah. Are we pretty much the sun stone for the last one? Where, where do you see that over here? I don't, but it just, that, it makes total sense. So the estrogen will cause the oxygen toxin, or the not oxytocin? The what? The Oh, okay, and that's true. You don't just hear, so you don't you don't like okay, just because you're. Hey, thank you for recording that. Oh, no worries, no worries. That would be weird. Just like so, yeah, you see, go away from me. I have no idea. I thought it was B for a second. So, so um, checking in. Which one? So, number one. We already turned him in, but I'm pretty sure. What is this one though? We're going with um, A, because prolactin will do it too, but that's only when you're pregnant. So number one, we put C. Yeah, I got that. Number two, we put E. Three, four, A, A. Five, we put C, B, A. Pretty much there. There were a few we went back and forth on the... And on your piece of paper, I want you to draw the male pelvis. I'm going to put it on the female pelvis. I don't have a plastic male pelvis, although I might go get one next door. So remember, the male pelvis is. More, has a more acute angle, less than 90 degrees. And take the red for the muscle. We're going to do the ischial cavernosis and bulbous spongiosis muscle. So if you have red, save that for the muscle. And then I don't care what the other colors you use are. I'm going to do the proof. In green, but you can do whichever you wish. And so we're doing. It got shy to hide. So we're going to do the truth is going to be attached to the paper. All right, the paper is your superior, or your inferior pubic ramus, and your ischial ramus. So the cruise is what's attached to the bow. And. Depending on your male prowess, you can make a small penis or a large one, whichever you wish. Come on, this is fun. <laughs> Gotta enjoy it. So, the cruise is going to be called the corpus cavernosus. So you want one piece for both of those, okay? So, this is much bigger than you're going to have on your paper, but the cruise is going to be attached to the bone, and then the corpus cavernosa is going to come off of the bone like that. So if this is your table, you're putting it on the paper like this, okay? And then you can make the 
Corpus Cabernet, whatever height is stable. And we need two of those. All right, we have two cura or leg of the penis and two Corpus Cabernet. Let me go next door and see if I can find a male pelvis. <laughs> All right. I think mine's, mine's too big. So we'll see what the other says. I'm sorry. You need some nitric oxide. <laughs> So, I'm gonna just do it on its own. I do recognize again this is a female pelvis, okay? You're making male, but I'm putting it on a female. Because I they're doing lecture next door. So there is the proof of a penis attached to the um, inferior pubic ramus and ischial rami. Once it is free of the bone, it's the corpus cavernosa, okay? Is that a dorsal structure or a ventral structure of the penis? The corpus cavernosus. Dorsal. dorsal. Excellent. Okay. So yours should look like this, flat on the table. So the cruise is going to be on the paper, and the corpus cavernosa are erect. Or you can make them make not erect if you wish. So you should have this at a sharper angle than I have here, because again, this should be a male pelvis. Okay? So what I have here, Cruz and Cruz, Corpus cavernosa, Corpus cavernosa. Okay? So these are both erectile tissue. The Cruz and the Corpus cavernosa are both erectile tissue. Now, I'm going to do the ball of the penis. So the ball of the penis becomes the, and I need to go in and correct your online quiz for that. The ball of the penis becomes the corpus. That's the muscle you're thinking of. Ball of the penis becomes the corpus spongiosa. So on the paper, what the bulb is resting on is the deep transverse perineal muscle, okay? Or the urogenital diaphragm or external urethral sphincter. You can see it better on the female here. And here is the bulb between the two 
correct. The corpus fungiosum is on the dorsal aspect. The hood then expands dorsally to cover the tips of the corpora cavernosa. And there's the glans penis. Okay. What's the nerve that contains sensory components from the glands? Pudendal, but before it's pudendal, it's the? Uh, the dorsal nerves? The dorsal nerve, yes. It is running along this dorsal aspect here, okay? So, here is the two. <laughs> the wall is resting on the original desire resting on your hand. And the corpus fasciosum is basically the tip. Yeah, it looks like you didn't cover the tip. Yeah, it looks like you didn't cover the tip. Okay? Hey, don't look at my face. <laughs> 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 it was... Hey, I'm multitasking over here. It looks like, like one of those. Uh, I, was, I was just like massaging it and I kind of gave up on it. I know it is. Mm. Make your mind feel self conscious, man. <laughs> it looks like, like a deformed thing. So let's do the ischio cavernosus muscle first. So if you're using whatever color you decide to use for. The muscle tissue, and I'm using red. Let me stabilize this penis first. Whoops, lost the bulb. <laughs> All right, so I'm just going to make one issue of cavernosis so I can see the proof on the other side. And this is going to cover the cruise and attach it to the boat. All right? It doesn't go onto the corpora cavernosa, as that leaves the bone tissue. Do I need a piece that's big enough to cover my cruise? Flatten it out so it's wide enough to wrap over it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the issue of cavernosis muscle is innervated by lower motor voluntary neurons of what major nerve? Is your pudendum, okay? By the time it gets here, it's actually called deep perineal, but we're just going to stay with pudendal. And so it's covered by the, the issue of cavernosis muscle, covers the cruise, and helps to anchor it to the angle of the pubic bone, the, the superior, inferior pubic ramus and ischial ramus. So that red piece right there is an issue of cavernosis muscle covering the proofs of the clitoris. And when it's integrated to contract by lower motor neurons of the pudendal nerve, is it gonna result in erection, emission, or ejaculation? So the ischial cavernosis muscle is integrated to skeletal muscle. It's integrated to contract by lower motor neurons of the pudendal nerve, coming out of the anterior horn, and causes the ischial cavernosis muscle to contract. When that contracts, does it contract during erection, emission, or ejaculation? Ejaculation. ejaculation. It's the major force for ejaculation. Parasympathetic is functioning as well for peristaltic contraction of the ureter. Sorry, not the ureter, sorry, the urethra. And sympathetic is causing the internal sphincter muscle of the bladder to constrict to keep urine from the coming out. But the most greatest force for ejaculation, the movement of the sperm through the urethra, is the skeletal muscle. It's a reflex, okay? But because it's skeletal muscle, you can consciously focus on that and increase um, or affect or regulate the ejaculation for better, for more sensation in the 
more time to look at it. So that's why you're told you can focus on it. Focusing doesn't count as empathetic or parasympathetic. So I don't know how many, I said this is a Thursday night class, and my husband who came in Thursday night, and I invited him to this class uh -huh. to come and help make penises and clitoris, and he's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, this is what I told the class. And he was appalled, but that's par for the course. Um, when he was a teacher, he taught business and business law, so that wasn't anywhere near as fun as this. <laughs> so I said, I don't know how many of you guys are sexually active, but all of you have this anatomy on you, okay? So I don't want it to ruin your sexual activity for the rest of your life, but at least for a couple of times, uh, whether you're doing this by yourself or with a partner, explore the anatomy. Think about what's happening with nitric oxide and so on. Again, don't obsess with it. Sorry, if you tell your partner, it may ruin it for them, but just say, I'm reviewing, I'm studying for my class, okay? <laughs> so, like I said, by yourself or with somebody else, I'm not advocating any particular type of behavior, <laughs> but I think it's helpful to know what's going on, okay? And you'll have an edge over everybody else out there. <laughs> All right, so what's our other pair of muscles? What's our other muscle that we need? And I did that without blushing, can you believe it? Well, those fungiosis. All right, it's easier to make that as just one muscle. Because the two muscles actually pair. They come together and pair in the midline. So they're going to cover the bulb and part of the corpus fungiosis. So they're going to go, the ischial cavernosis just covered the cruise. The bulb is going to cover the bulb and part of the corpus fungiosis. So I'm going to make it a little wider. So I'm going to do the entire bowl Yeah, no, that's why I kind of got a little frustrated when I was just kind of like, oh. oh, so now you've got like a rainbow kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think yours is a lot a better quality than mine. I feel like you can separate yours. Mine's kind of like, I don't know, just kind of all mushed together. I kind of have the same problem with mine. Yeah, it's kind it's of a lot better than mine. Mine, look, look at it. It really just all came together. Yeah, it doesn't have much firmness. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> Yeah. 